Welcome back. Uh, now that uh, we've learned all about different types of ways to import data into R, uh, you will see that there are a lot of very, very similar ways to export the, the, uh, the data out. And so uh, I'm going to go ahead and walk through a few of these ways. And uh, you should notice a pattern here. So to start with, uh, if I go ahead and, and reference some of the, the data that I have loaded from uh, previously, if I want to view DS, which is one of the hockey uh, data files that uh, that we had imported in the last lecture um, we can go ahead and write this data back out using a write.csv function so before you may recall read.csv would read the data in uh, in this case write.csv will write it right back out and so the uh, the parameters to put through here are the name of the data frame uh, ds in this case and we just have to give it a path. So the file can be equal to, and in double quotes, we just list out the name of the file. Uh, because we uh, we still have our working directory set, uh, get working directory as our training folder here, uh, I don't need to put the full path. And that's another nice thing about reading and writing uh, when you set a working directory, is we can just give this file a name. So uh, I'm going to call this hockeydata.csv. And when I run this, it uh, it'll just write out this data file and put it in uh, in this folder here that uh, that I'd already set as my working directory. So that's CSV, uh, very basic. As far as text, uh, an earlier example was using a tab delimited file. So if I want to write out a tab delimited file, a CSV won't work because that's that's comma delimited. But we can use write table, and essentially this is a very similar function. It just allows different outputs. So I still want to output the DS uh, uh, data frame. And then in this case, we're just going to give it a name. We can call it the same thing, hockey data. But this time, it's going to be .txt because it's not a comma-separated set of values. We're going to do a separator uh, that's equal to the backslash t, which is representing uh, it as a, a tab delimited file. So this this now has written out a CSV and a TXT, uh, you know, of the same same data set here. Um, as we walk through through importing, R has a specific data type specific to to the program called R data, and this can be extremely useful uh, as far as storage. I believe it to be a little bit cleaner, a little bit faster, especially with really really large data sets. So the function to kind of output this data is save and again we just kind of give it give it a name in this working directory and we're going to kind of stick with a theme here hockey data and then this extension is just our data and what this will do is essentially it'll create this file and this can only be read using r this isn't something that you could open up with another program very easily uh, so it, there's some advantages because it's faster to import and uh and I, I believe it to be faster, um, but uh, but you really can't open it in any other program. You need you need R to do it. Um, we'll go ahead and close um, this lecture on an R image. So right now, as I showed earlier, um, I only have DS in my working memory here. But if I were to create a second data frame called DS2, and I'm just gonna R bind DS2 itself, which is essentially just kind of doubling up the data to make it a little bit of different. So if the dimensions of DS are 551 rows, uh, the dimension of DS2 is double that, 1102. Uh, the reason I wanted to, to show, now that I have two data frames in here, DS and DS2, is uh, there's, a, there's another option to output uh, called save image. And what save image allows you to do is to save more than just one data frame at a time uh, by saving image. Uh, we we can still give it a name, and in this case, we still want it to read as our data. Uh, but when I load this back in, it won't just have the one data frame. It's going to list everything in in memory. So if I had three, four, five, ten, fifteen, twenty data frames, it'll pull everything in. And this can be handy. Not only is it fast, but if you're working through large data sets that maybe take a, a while to query and pull down, and you don't want to kind of repeat the process later on. Uh, essentially, by going this this path, you can save an R data file 